Have you ever noticed when you're in a moving vehicle, maybe a car or a bus on a road trip or something, that the objects outside your window appear to move? And not only do the objects outside of your window appear to move, but they seem to move past you at different speeds depending on how far away they are. You'll notice that objects closer to the vehicle, trees, signs, light posts, things like that, seem to move past really quickly. But objects farther in the distance seem to crawl by a lot more slowly. Well, this observation that objects outside your window appear to move by you at different rates is called parallax. And you can use parallax to calculate the distance between Earth and stars. It might be hard to see how you could do that, but it's exactly what I'm going to show you in this video. So parallax, what is it? And how can we use it to calculate the distances to the stars? I want you to humor me and do a quick demonstration. Hold your fist out at arm's length with your thumb up, and then look at your thumb and close your left eye. And then switch eyes, close your right eye. Switch eyes back and forth rapidly. Do you notice what your thumb is doing? It looks like your thumb is jumping back and forth against the background as you switch eyes. But your thumb isn't really going anywhere, you're just changing the angle with which you look at it. The amount that your thumb appears to move is called the parallax angle, because it can be measured in degrees. Like we saw in the car ride, this is also an example of parallax. So this leads us to the goal of this video. After watching this video, you should be able to use parallax to determine whether a star is closer or farther from Earth, and calculate a star's distance from Earth in parsecs using the parallax formula. So we observed a moment ago in the car ride, and also with our thumb, what we would call parallax. And parallax can be used to determine the distance to a star. By this point, you might have noticed that parallax happens when you, the observer, are changing position, but the object you're looking at is stationary. When the observer moves, but the object doesn't, the object appears to move against the background. This appearance of movement is what we call parallax. So I've set up an environment here in which we can experiment with parallax. I've set up three colored candles at different distances from my position here. Those candles represent stars. Remember that the candles, the colored stars, are really the stars that we're paying attention to in this setup. They're colored just so that we can easily tell them apart from the background stars. We have a yellow nearby star, we have a red middle star, and then we have a blue distant star. And these Christmas lights that I've strung through this black pegboard are our background stars. These stars are extremely distant from us, the observer. We're talking thousands or hundreds of thousands of light years away. To demonstrate how we can use parallax to compare the distances to stars that we see in the night sky, I've set up this really simple little apparatus. What I've built here is a simple rotating stage that models the Earth's revolution around the Sun. As Earth revolves around the Sun, its position is changing. The maximum change in position takes place over six months, as in maybe when Earth moves from spring back over here to fall. Now, I can simulate us looking out into space from Earth if I replace my globe with a camera. So I'll just get that set up right now. Now that I've got a camera set up in our position where Earth would be, I can actually simulate what we would see from Earth as Earth revolves around the Sun. And I can actually do that sort of in real time with you. Now I'm going to shut off our sun just to cut out a lot of this extra glare. So I'm going to simulate an orbit of Earth revolving around the sun while we look at those three stars, those three colored stars that I have set up as those candles. So let's start. Our candles are located here, here, and there. This one is the closest candle, this one's in the middle, and that one's the farthest away. So that's one half of an orbit. That's six months that I've just moved. And now we're going to continue moving around. Let's make a full orbit. All right, now we're back to where we started. And let's stop there. So I'm going to rotate the Earth around the sun from one end of its orbit to another, looking at those candles 
as they appear to move against the background stars. I'm going to do it again. Let's make a full year here. Did you see that? It appears as though the colored stars, our candles, were moving against the background. The appearance of movement in these three stars is parallax, and we report parallax with a measurement that we call the parallax angle. Now earlier I had you hold out your thumb and switch eyes back and forth. The parallax angle that your thumb is jumping around is probably around maybe two or three degrees. The parallax angles of stars are extremely small, and so we measure these with a unit called arc seconds. There are 3,600 arc seconds in a degree, so an arc second is extremely small. For comparison, the angular diameter of the sun in the sky is around 1,800 arc seconds. But what about the different distances of our colored candles? Remember that the candles are different distances, and our background stars are extremely distant. Do we observe different amounts of parallax angles in these stars? Take a moment to pause the video and explain how the candle's distance from Earth seemed to affect how much parallax angle we observe. I'll show you this one more time, just in case you forgot. There's us moving one half of a revolution around the sun. And here's another complete. So pause the video and think about that right now. You might have noticed that the distance between us and the star that we're looking at affects how much parallax we observe. We observe parallax in our colored stars, the candles, because they're closer to us. The most distant candle shows a small amount of parallax. The middle candle shows a little bit more parallax. And the very closest candle shows the largest degree of parallax. It appears to swing back and forth a lot against those background stars. In those extremely distant background stars, we observe no parallax. We would say that the parallax angle of those distant stars is too small to measure. It's effectively zero. So let me turn the sun on again, just for illustrative purposes here. So the reason that we observe different amounts of parallax in our three candles, the three colored stars, is because as Earth revolves around the sun, we're viewing these three stars at different angles. At this point in our orbit, we're viewing the stars from over here. But then, at this point in our orbit, we're viewing the stars from over here. This change in position from one end of our orbit to the other is what makes it appear as though our three candles are wobbling or moving against those background stars. And we notice that the closer the star, the more parallax we observe. Since our view of the closest star changes angle the most from one end of our orbit to the other, we measure a large parallax angle. But because the farthest star, the blue star, that angle doesn't change as much, we measure a smaller parallax angle. At this point, you should have met the first goal of this video. You should be able to use parallax to determine whether a star is closer or farther from Earth. Next, we want to be able to calculate a star's distance from Earth in a unit called parsecs using the parallax formula. What we want to be able to do next is calculate a star's distance from Earth in parsecs. Let's analyze the results from our parallax model. We observed that a star's distance is inversely proportional to the amount of parallax that we observe. If there's a large parallax angle, the star is nearer. If there is a small parallax angle, the star is farther away. If we don't measure any parallax angle, that means the star is too far away to determine its distance with this technique. This relationship is mathematically described with this formula d equals 1 divided by p, in which d is the distance in parsecs and p is the parallax angle measured in arc seconds. A parsec is about 3.26 light years. Parsecs and arc seconds are used in stellar parallax because they help avoid having to do trigonometry and dealing with clunky units such as miles and degrees. Let's do a worked example of how to use the parallax formula. The nearest star to our sun is Proxima Centauri, a small red dwarf visible from Earth's southern hemisphere. The measured parallax angle of Proxima Centauri is 0.77 arcseconds. 
Using the parallax formula, we find that 1 divided by 0 0.77 equals 1.3. So Proxima Centauri is 1.3 parsecs from Earth. And that's really all you have to do. If you want to convert parsecs into light years, this is also easy. Since there's 3.26 light years in a parsec, just multiply your parsecs by light years. 1.3 parsecs times 3.26 light years per parsec equals 4.24 light years. So that's how you would use the parallax formula to calculate the distance between Earth and Proxima Centauri. Now, our ability to measure parallax from Earth is limited by the size of Earth's orbit around the Sun. Since Earth only travels so far between different points in its orbit, we only observe so much parallax from season to season. The New Horizons spacecraft, launched in 2006, provides an interesting exception to this rule. New Horizons conducted a flyby of the Pluto system in 2015. In June 2020, the New Horizons spacecraft snapped this picture of Proxima Centauri, and astronomers were able to measure the parallax angle compared with a simultaneous measurement from Earth. This is a much, much larger parallax angle than we're able to measure from Earth because the location of the New Horizons spacecraft represents such a huge change in viewing angle compared with Earth's annual revolutions around the Sun. Let's review the goal of this video to make sure you made it. After watching this video, you should be able to use parallax to determine whether a star is closer or farther from Earth and be able to calculate a star's distance from Earth in parsecs using the parallax formula. If you can't do that, go back and watch the parts of the video that you didn't understand. Until next time, remember, you can learn anything.